I'm actually not going to say what it was. What? It's actually too much. Say. Why it's actually too much for this. Why do I not know? When I was younger, when I was much younger, I... <laughs> Be sure swallowed it. <laughs> Oh my god! Okay, uh, big warning before we- Jingle bell. No, you do this every- Yeah, e but I, I think people like it. Big warning before we start this episode. If you're in Sophie's eyeline or sight or whatever it is, she is- <coughs> This morning. You are. Oh, you're going to do it now. I'm scared. I If I could punch you, I would do it. If it wasn't- If you wouldn't call like- me a wife beater or a husband beater which you would I would just do it that little hat you're wearing looks good as well your hair looks good and your tight stupid jumper looks good I don't want to generalise or not generalise I don't want to say I don't want to step out of line here but um, I feel that it might be the uh, what I don't know, I feel like it might be that uh, where you, uh, is it your period? Yeah, it is. Okay, just checking. Just checking. Just checking. So Could, what do you do? You behave nicely. Okay, I was just checking because someone's a little bit grouchy. What are you going to do about it, Sophie? My biggest ick. <laughs> oh, I've got to stop because there's a siren. Oh, she's even, oh, sorry that the police are trying to save lives. Jamie goes... Oh, it hasn't stopped. The siren's still there. It's dying out. Jamie goes to me, oh, I'm feeling a bit blue or glum. Two words that give me serious ick. When do I say that? You say blue and you say it like that. I'm like, oh, just say you feel sad shit. Feel when shit. did I say I felt blue? Don't know. And I haven't said that at all. Yeah, you are. You're like <laughs> Eeyore walking around, moping around with your head to the floor. Are you kidding me? I'm no, you've got a pep in your set, but for a while, clenching that little leg under there. I have, a, I have a pep in my seven, right? You don't. Oh, I feel sick. Wee, wee, wee. Sorry. No, no, you. Oh, God, I think I've got COVID every day. <laughs> every fucking day. He's like, you, you know what you had, Sophie? COVID. No, I didn't, Jamie. I had... Like, well, you were sick. You were, you were very violently unwell. What? When? You, 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 you were unwell, Sophie Abu. I was unwell once, but I didn't like to tell people that because I got up and went straight to work the next day and I don't like people to know. No, but also... <laughs> you were uh, so unwell. No, I wasn't. No, it was just like a nighttime unwellness. So if you went, really so if you went through, you did. You went through a family pack of Andrex. <laughs> Sorry, you did. That's no, I went. wasn't. That's really rank. You need to rain it the fuck in. Like, okay. no one okay, okay, likes okay. it. I okay. literally said to him, I said to him last night, <laughs> Okay. You're so okay. boring that you just talk about <laughs> shit the whole time. Like, I get don't. another thing to talk about. All right. Um, how about uh, philanthropy? Jamie thought that I'd hired someone to decorate our tree. I still I did do. it so well. He still thinks. He literally said to my sister, she obviously didn't do it. I don't understand. I decorated our house. I, I, the whole house is me. The bed was me. On a Saturday morning, you make the bed well fucking done. No. Oh yeah, our, our, our trampy bed, that suede air, I hate it. It's suede, like I'm a porn star, I don't like it. Oh, is that not the thing suede. to say? Suede. Suede It's suede It's not a vibe, let me tell you. I do not like that suede bed. It's big and that's about the only thing that's good about it. Before we start, I've got a little Christmas present for you. Oh, hello. Here you go. Uh, it's a Christmas jumper. Oh, Watch well. out. Jamie, <laughs> I have a coffee in my hand. <laughs> Sorry, I just threw it across at you. He put it on, honey. Merry Christmas, you wee fanny. <laughs> <laughs> what does it say? Merry Christmas, you wee fanny. <laughs> God, oh, why don't you put it on? What is that? You, no, but, no, you've got to put it on. No, but this is nice. You want to just lay it across your actual jumper? Wear it while I'm trying when I go, Fanny, look, you wee Fanny. You wee Fanny. All right, everybody. Okay, listen, it's our <laughs> Christmas episode. Funny. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Okay, shall we begin our episode? Boy, yeah. Howdy, everybody. Welcome to Newlyweds. Howdy, everyone. Welcome to Newlyweds. My name is Sophie Poo. And I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you are, girl. <laughs> I am sat in the studio. <laughs> oh, damn straight, girl. My name is Sophia Boo, and I am. Oh my god! Why, you why, girl? 
Give me another accent too. I'm okay. really in the mood. Go and do North Carolina. Give me a North Carolina accent that I'll copy it. <laughs> do a Michigan accent. Oh, my family's from Michigan. Okay, do a Michigan accent. Sophie! <laughs> That's it. Can you give me another one? Okay. Irish. Well, <laughs> okay. Every time. Okay. Okay, I love this game. We haven't done it for a while. I want you to go. Okay, here we go. I'm going to shout an accent at you. Can we do impressions? Let's do impressions instead. You want to do impressions? Yeah, like movie impressions. Of, sorry, what movie impressions do you want to do? Okay. Okay, do Christmas movie impressions. Okay, I'm not big on Christmas movies, but I'll give it a go. Okay, okay. go. Grinch, it's Christmas. I'm Cindy Lou. What the hell is going I on? I don't know. I think you've actually lost the plot today. <laughs> I think you've actually lost the you plot today. You do on that. Uh, you want me to do something? Yeah. Crazy? Okay. Um, that okay, was yeah. fucking good. Here we go. I'll do Hugh Grant. Ready? But um, he's not dumb. No, I'm trying to do it. But um, what the fuck? Let, he's, this, let, let you me sound like someone from the Slowly Pony. But um, I'm let go. Me, let me do it. Let me stop interrupting you. Ready? Here we go. But um, love is all around. You okay, like wait, that? Okay, okay, go. Okay, he'll go, go. Ah. <laughs> no, <laughs> that was so good. Go on. He doesn't go bottom. But um, love. But um, wait, hang on. <laughs> You're doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it now. Okay, cut the butt arm. Okay. But I needed to get You're into character. You're not cutting anything. I needed to get into character. Wait. Get into character. Wait, shut up and let me go. Let me have my moment. <sighs> Let's go. What are you blowing? <laughs> my smile away. <laughs> I need to get into character. You're blowing your smile <laughs> yeah. away. Okay. Blow away, honey. <laughs> I can't stop smiling. <clears throat> Oh, come on, Jack. Okay, producer Jack is giving her the script. Okay, go on. Here we go. Go okay. on. The, the script. Okay, <clears throat> with Sophie, wants to do an impression. It's Love Actually. She's playing Hugh Prime Grant. Minister, right? Yes. Whenever Prime... I get gloomy. No, hold on, Sophie. She's playing the Prime Minister, Love Actually, played by Hugh Grant. Sophie Habu, <clears throat> take it away. Stop hurming. <clears throat> Whenever I get gloomy with the state of the world, I think about the arrivals gate at Heathrow Airport. General appearance. No, I don't like that one. Jack, that's not a well-known quote. That is, it's the beginning of Love okay, wait, Actually. Okay, I'll do it. No, that's it, but I'll do it. Here we wait, go. Wait, not, you've not given me a chance. Oh my God. But, but, um, love is all around. That was good. That's not shite. It was really, this is it. Okay, okay. I'm going to do... Well, give me a woman's one. I've got a woman's voice. I'm going to do... <laughs> I'm going to do Hugh Grant at the beginning of Love Actually. Of course you fucking are. <laughs> Why? You look like you're about to cry. Here we go, ready? Whenever I get gloomy. <laughs> Stop it, let me do What's it. What's with that? Let me do Whenever it. I let, me, let me do it. Stop it. Gloomy. Stop it, let me do it. <laughs> oh my God. Honestly, anyone listening, is I... they're bored of this already. Here we go. I gotta get into Hugh Gaunt. Let me do Kira Knight no, with that. I don't. I'll get Kira Knight, yeah. No, I don't. Okay, go on. Okay. Okay, here we go. Ready? Whenever I get gloomy with the state of the world, I think about the arrivals gate at Heathrow Airport. General opinion starting to make out that we live in a world of hatred and greed. But I don't see that. It seems to me that, in fact, love is everywhere. No, you didn't okay, even listen. Because like, no, I was practicing, I was getting into character. No, no, um. you know what it is. You just have to say, I'm quite pretty, actually. And put the other thing down and then this oh, is Oh, when did she say that? I know you're Peter's best friend and I know you've never particularly warned me. Look, don't argue. No, this is this okay, not even fuck. a scene. Like, no one knows what, what that is. What scene is it then? Just say, I thought I was good acting. <laughs> I'm so upset. Just say, just say I'm quite pretty, actually. The lo- from B. Kieran Knightley. And- well, where did she say that? When she's watching the VHS film. Yeah. I'm quite pretty. Pretty, actually. Oh, my God. Okay, right. Do you know what? Uh, most of that will be cut. <laughs> okay, here we go. Fuck What's... you. If you want to see Jamie's reaction, if you want to see his impression, it was the funniest thing I've ever seen, watch it on YouTube. Sophie has this thing at the moment where she's been doing impressions. She's been doing an impression of apparently what I do all the time. You guys will know. Everyone in the office okay. will know because you see Jamie's concentrated face. Hang okay. on, hang on. Wait one second. I want to tee this up. So it's hard for anyone to see this. If you're listening to this, you can go onto our YouTube or social media account to see it. Apparently I have a concentration face that I do all the time and apparently this is what it is. Sophie, what so is my concentration face? face? Or if he's texting or if he's about to eat food, he'll be like this. <laughs> 
Yeah. Doesn't he? It's so <laughs> what? Weird. what? So I can uh, and you pierce like this little poo bum, like bum hole lips of yours, and you're like, <laughs> and I'm like, and then when you're cutting like beef or something, like we had beef on Sunday, and I saw you like, <laughs> I was like, ah, stop. It's, it's uncanny. Fair. It's uncanny. It's not fair. I bet so many people have this as well. When, whenever you, like, if ever it cuts the camera and he just gets a text and has to reply, let's zoom in on that little okay. butthole mouth of yours. I think this is unfair because honestly, there are so many things which is unfair compared to you and I. We were sitting there the other day. That makes sense. This is the scream that Sophie has when I scare her. Wow, this is quite the entrance to the sea. <laughs> That is her. It's God, honestly. It's, no one understands that it's six in the morning. I thought he was asleep and he'd been. He comes into my ear and goes, <sighs> creeps. Like, who wouldn't scream that loudly? I do this thing now when we're in bed. So we're in bed and the lights are all off. And Sophie goes, to, she goes to the bathroom. She walks in the bathroom to take a pee and the bar, the, the loo is around the corner. So you can't see. When she goes in and sits down and taking a pee, I get up into the bed on all fours and I look and I make a scary face I go ah, and I freeze in the bed like that and, and all when I she come out is like a two foot tall naked <laughs> blonde gremlin going with his dick swinging it's awful and she screams every time and she goes oh my god you're gonna give me a heart attack you're gonna who do you think it's in the bedroom when I'm scaring you I think you're asleep you're literally asleep and then you wake up like a weirdo when I go to the loo it's bizarre what do you mean you're asleep and then I go to the loo and suddenly you've like crapped up into like this got this bout of energy yeah, because I get energy at night. Yeah, I know. I have a lot of energy at night. That's what happens. We also, guys, are uh, really exciting. We went and recorded uh, an episode with another couple. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but it's coming out in the new year. It's very exciting. But we had a bit of an embarrassing moment because we recorded in their home and they asked us to go and sit on their brand new white sofa. It looked really clean and really nice. I sat on the sofa and they and we had our shoes off and I had my shoes off on the sofa and we were doing the podcast and I suddenly looked down and I realised I had an orange, I had an orange toenail. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did, I had an orange toenail, didn't I? Yeah, you look like you had like nicotine toenails. I had an orange toenail because I had a spray tan on it. and I'm not sure what was more embarrassing, the spray tan comment or this. It went on to my toenails and made my toenails orange. And we were talking, ha, 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 laughing on the podcast. That would be scary if you were talking like that. <laughs> okay, we were. Ha, 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 laugh, laugh, laugh. And I suddenly look down and I see my orange toenail and I look up and the person is looking down. At, She's looking at your she was looking at my toenail, which was on her <laughs> white sofa. <laughs> and so I had to stop and go, by the way. Oh my God. I know. I, can I just say, I really was shocked that you put your bare feet on that sofa. Were you? Both feet as well. I was genuinely so shocked. Well, everyone's nodding. I honestly got on my foot and basically broke it. I went, <laughs> snap to try and hook it under my other leg so you couldn't see my toenail. I honestly was like, fuck it. <laughs> snap. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, oh, that's really bad. I would have just put your feet, but you couldn't bless your soul, put your feet on the floor because you're too short. Oh, so you, you had to sit like that, didn't you? No, I, well, I wasn't too short. Here you are, they didn't touch the floor. Okay, we're talking to me about Christmas spirit. What are you excited about Christmas? I'm thrilled. I'm really excited about Christmas with all my family. It's so exciting. What? I don't know what you're laughing at. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Because I just remember something. So, so... <laughs> No, stop it because I'm in period pains. Sophie recently has had a really sore hip. Yeah, she... it's so sore now. I've got sciatic nerve. Trapped sciatic nerve or something. She has this nerve problem in her hip. And every single time she sits down for two for too long she gets up and the only way I describe it is when she starts walking she starts walking like she's a cowboy <laughs> <laughs> and we were at my mum's we at my mum's house and Sophie was walking like a cowboy <laughs> and my mum was looking like what the fuck is she So much. It hurts so much. The way you were walking was like this. <laughs> and I was like, why is she walking like that? I'm in so 
so much pain now. <laughs> you try fucking having a trap nut up in your head, you big ass. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good and I saw my mum looking at this going <laughs> no nothing is other than because you were walking out because <laughs> you knew we were going to catch up <laughs> where was I walking out <laughs> you were walking out of the door where was I because <laughs> <laughs> I think you wanted a head start <laughs> Wait, what about the peppermint? That's the funny thing. What is it? The peppermint. Oh my God, tell that one as well. Okay, guys, oh. don't come at me because I, I remember putting this on my Instagram and literally every single like health doctor was like, do oh. not do that. Someone told me that if you're bloated, put peppermint and oil in your belly button, it seeps into like your colon and like <laughs> gets rid of your blow. <laughs> so shit. It's such nonsense. Put it in your bu- belly button and it goes to your colon. Amazing. Just shove it up your ass. <laughs> Guys, for about a year. So they told me this just before lockdown. So I never went to a professional to find out if it was real or not. Oh my so God. all throughout lockdown in the country, I would lie and put like a whole tub of <laughs> all in my belly button. It like stink. You no, know, like things were like sore. It was seeping into my colon, into my tummy. I was like barfing up peppermint. I'm not joking. Anyway, <laughs> I was staying with his mum and, and Jonathan, and I my see, stepfather. I see Penny, Jamie's mum, go. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? I going, sniffing like a little mouse around the house. <laughs> I see a big up truffle, the dog. <laughs> sniffing him, <laughs> sniffing her hands, getting her. <laughs> Trying to find where the peppermint's going from. She couldn't stop sniffing. And I just thought, I was brand new into the family at this point. So I just sat still, like, I can't die. I did you pep- say it's coming from my asshole? <laughs> I even said put peppermint oil in my belly rustle and a whole tub of it. And then Jonathan walks in, we're having lunch, and he's like, Oh, I can smell peppermint oil. <laughs> <laughs> I can smell peppermint. And Penny's like, I know. Have you got me a present, by the way? No, we're not doing presents this year. Well, honey, I have you a present. That's uh, allowed. Sorry? That's allowed. Okay, have you got me a present? No, because we're not doing presents this year. I've got you a present. But I didn't know. Well, Jack did tell me, but I didn't know. It no, you today. don't need your, you don't need producer Jack to inform me that you need to get me a present. No, my present is going to be with you spending Christmas with you on the slopes. Oh, I know what you're talking about. No. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. No. I know what my present is this year. Get ready to smell all that peppermint. Oh my god, that was fire. <laughs> I didn't mean that at all. What is your favourite thing about Christmas? Um, stuffing. Your favourite thing about Christmas is stuffing? Yeah, the food. Why don't you just have that all year then? Because it's kind of rang to have all year. Okay, so your favourite thing about Christmas is stuffing? Uh, pigs and blanket. About Christmas? It's not family? It's not... My family. Okay, so so what's your... Spending it with me? I spend every day with you. That is yeah, not no, my favourite. But Christmas, I like stuffing. I like pigs and blanket. I like family. Is that good? Yeah, what do it, you like? Um, <clears throat> I I like the fact about Christmas is that we get to spend it with family. That for me, 100% is it. Yeah. And, and I also think, I just want to say that some people may be having a uh, lonely Christmas. And if you are having a lonely Christmas, don't worry. Just listen to our podcast because hopefully it will cheer you up. That's the worst piece of advice I've no. ever well, given. Well, hopefully, no. Maybe if you listen, we'll all feel like we're together. Oh, that's a lovely thing. So let's maybe pretend it's Christmas Day today for anyone listening today on Christmas. That's a great idea, honey. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, every single person. I love that. Yeah, Merry Christmas, everyone. Hey, oh, by the way, uh, you know we spoke about fertility on the show. Um, I do. I went and had a fertility check. You did? Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. I went to a fertility center um, all by myself. You weren't there. What were the results? Uh, I don't have the results yet. I'm going to talk about the results in the new year. So I don't have them yet. I think, you know, Christmas time, I don't want to know what the results are. It may be a little scary. It may be great news, but I just don't think that. But I went to the fertility center all by myself and I had a little bit of a mishap, though. Because wow. I... In the fertility centre. I went to the fertility centre. I went to the wrong place to begin with. Right, I'm on my way to 
go and have my fertility checked. A little bit nervous for some reason, don't really know why. By myself, my wife hasn't come with me. You didn't invite me. I love her. Anyway, here we go. I didn't come with you. About to enter in. So I'm about to enter in, right? Didn't, you didn't even invite me. Yeah, well, I, I didn't invite you. I didn't you. even know you were going. Okay, well, I went. I was about to be invited in, and then this happened. Hello. How are you? Sorry, a little bit late, Jamie Lang here. Is this the right place? I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the wrong place. So sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> Where did you go into? I went into a travel shop. I went into a travel shop. Did you think- say I need to give you my spam? <laughs> I went into the travel shop thinking that it was the place where I had to give my sperm. It definitely wasn't. The whole, did you say that? I did not say that really. To, I sort of mentioned it to them, but they, I didn't really understand what was going on because they were looking at me very weirdly. And then I went downstairs to the other bit to um, go and check my fertility. And do you know what they ask? The question they ask? Well, they ask you if there's any spillage. Ew. At the end of the conversation. Ew. Why is that ew? That's gross, because like your sperm's spillaging. It's quite weird doing it, I it, think. I can imagine. It's quite weird. It's really gross. Like, I feel a bit grossed out, but it's a great thing to do. Why do you feel grossed out about it? Well, it's just quite a gross thing to do, isn't it? I know exactly what you went in there and did. What did I do? Producer Jack, were there magazines? There were no magazines in the place. You basically walk in there, Soph. And you uh, have a empty room that someone leads you to. And you have a chair that you sit on that they put like a nice little tissue paper on that you can sit on. And you then do your business and then you walk out afterwards. But with what? Memory. Do they take your phone? No, they don't. Why would they come? So what were you looking at on your phone? Didn't need my phone. I have. So what was were you thinking of? I was thinking about all the love that I have for you. And you know that you didn't was, go on your phone. Uh, no, I was thinking about all the love that I have for you, and that You're was vile. That was overwhelming. You're vile. No, I was thinking. You're vile. It was you. I was thinking about you, and the overwhelming sensation of thinking about you made it easy. I don't know why you're smiling like crap at little mouth of yours. <laughs> what do you think I was thinking about? I don't want to know. I don't think you're thinking about anything. I think you're watching something probably. What would I be watching? What the fuck do you think? I don't know what you watch. <laughs> I don't watch it. Uh, you look sleazy right now. Have you ever watched porn? No. <laughs> Have you ever? No. <laughs> Have you ever watched porn? I haven't watched porn. <laughs> no, seriously, I haven't. And my dad listens to podcasts, so you're cutting all of this out. You've never ever watched porn? I've never watched porn. In your life? No. Why are you smiling? Yeah, because you look so pleased with yourself. It's frightening. You have watched porn. No. You look at you biting your little nails. <laughs> you're vile. Why do you look like you're about to burst into a million smithereens? Anyway, um, it's very exciting. Um, so I've done that before Christmas, and in the new year, I'm going to talk about revealing what actually the results happened, and I think it's going revealing to... what you actually watched. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a milking table. I'm joking. It wasn't. It was not. It was not. It was not called. I did not watch something called a milking table. What's a milking table? I have no idea. But I just, what is it? No, Jack. You know exactly what it is. What is it, Jamie? I don't know what it is. Oh, uh, you sick bastard! I didn't watch that. Yeah, you. Why do you even know what it is? Because I don't know. You don't know what it is. What do you think a milking table is? Mm. Tits milking something. Tits milking something. Well, I don't know what a fucking milking table is, and I don't want to know. Okay, listen. Um, we're gonna... What's a milking table? Should I Google it? Okay, and you don't need to Google a milking table. Okay, she's actually going to Google what a milking table is. Wait, I'm watching. <laughs> no, you're fucking disgusting. I didn't watch that. You're actually so disgusting, Jack. Do you not actually know what that is? It's a wooden table with holes with dicks through them and girls underneath them, like milking them like cows. Oh my God. That's actually the most disgusting thing you've ever said to me. I'm obviously not watching. Milking them it's like It's so cows. rank. You, I'm milking them like fucking cows. That... If there's anything more to, like, to turn a girl off, that there's nothing more. 
All right, listen, I tell you what, it's a very Christmassy episode, I hope. And I just want to say a big Merry Christmas to every single person. We absolutely freaking love you guys. Um, uh. I'm sorry, honey. Listen, we're newlyweds. <laughs> we talk about these things. Okay, well, listen, we're going to get on with the episode. Here we go. We've got so many Christmassy, <laughs> Christmassy things coming up later in the episode. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for... Listeners Messages. Several years ago, my two Who's friends... Who's this from? Anonymous, I think. Oh, it's anonymous. All right, here we go. Right. Several years ago, my two friends, a couple, held a house party. The guy is known for sleepwalking and my friend would come into work and tell me the most crazy stories about his sleepwalking antics. Taking down blinds, dismantling furniture, screaming that there's a digger in the house, emptying soil. At the party, I was one who would be staying over in the spare room, single bed. After the party ended, we all went straight to sleep. Several hours later, I'm fast asleep, the door opened, and someone walked in and lay on top of me. <laughs> I rubbed the duvet off the bed I was in. I must have been around 19 at the time and petite, but the person was heavier than me, and I know that you're not supposed to wake up a sleepwalking person. Assuming, of course, it's my friend's boyfriend, I was gently patting his head, saying, wake up, you're in the wrong room, whilst trying to move out of the bed. Thank. Thankfully, just seconds later, the bedroom door bursts open, the lights come on. There is a man and another woman, not my friends who are in the room next door. They both look at me, gasping. I look down and it wasn't my friend whose head I was stroking, but a middle-aged man I'd never seen before, only in his boxers. Ah! And these were his friends who went looking for him. I was absolutely mortified. Stroking a middle-aged man. No, I'm actually repulsed. They helped him up and I stood there in shock. And th thankfully, I was in a full set of long pajamas. The man was still half asleep and they managed to get him downstairs where he tried to curl up on the sofa. It turns out he was drunk and sleepwalking and somehow got into my friend's house. I'm not sure if they knew of him or if he lived on the same street and just went into the wrong house as I was stroking his bald head to sleep oh, honestly my. I was mortified I didn't ask any questions the next day that that is so funny is shocking oh that is shocking. Okay, go on. Um, okay, I basically went through <laughs> loads and loads of messages. My sister and I used to share a bedroom when I was 18 and 19 years old, and our weekend plans would never be the same. And sometimes we would only run into each other on a Sunday. This particular weekend, she went out to a bar on a Friday, and I had gone out on a Saturday. On Saturday evening slash Sunday morning, I stumbled in, and to my surprise, my lovely sister had gone out again. I collapse to my bed and wake up a couple hours later absolutely parched for some water or any sort of hydration for that matter. My throat felt like it was closing in on me. I grabbed the closest bottle I could see in sight on my sister's bedside cabinet on the other side of the room and threw it down my throat as quick as possible. My eyes go wide as I realise it's not water. The taste and smell suddenly hits me and it's only my sister's vomit. <laughs> from the night <laughs> before. <laughs> no, I really don't like that. That, that is... has just gone down my throat. Oh my God, I actually feel like I'm going to be sick. That is the most vile thing I've ever heard. <laughs> You're fucking kidding me. You're fucking joking. <laughs> what? Why are you vomiting? You've read it. I didn't read it the whole way through. Uh... Oh. These messages are quite hectic. Okay. Like, Is that the end of it? It's the end of it. It'd be lumpy. Imagine that surprise. No, guys, I actually can't. Have you ever, can't. Have you ever drunk a have you ever have you ever drunk something and realized Yeah, once. Okay, go. We had um a holiday home in Spain and underneath you know, water bottles get lost under the bed, right? And what one night I was parched and I bent out under. I was like, where's my water bottle? And I like bent my arm under the bed. I thought it rolled under and I got the water bottle and I drank it. And it had obviously been there for like two years. <coughs> it was. <coughs> no, I'm not joking. It had obviously been like from two summers ago. That is honestly... You that... don't... You will never know the pain. Honestly, you will never know. That is honestly the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. It was like stale sewage water in my mouth. Oh, okay, we have a... Uh, have you? Yeah. I, I have. I've drunk something awful. Come. I'm not going to say. I have a story from Frere, a wild story. I fell in love with a boy on a beach in Bali because he told me his favourite colour was white. I was obsessed. Spent max three hours with him. Two weeks later, I flew to Australia to meet up with him. I live in the UK. And he was game. He wanted me there. I arrived at the airport and he never turned up. He ghosted me. Oh my God. 
that savage? Why on earth are we reading that out? I don't, I don't know. Those listeners' messages were quite wild. I feel uneasy about the sick one. Okay, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. To end it off, that out to me. To end it off, Soph, I'm going to read out a really lovely one because it's Christmas and we've done a lot of love messages and we love them. So I have one from Lara who says this. Hey, Jamie and Sophie and co. While I unfortunately can't think of a funny enough story for the podcast that won't make me look like an outraged, deranged human being, I do have a message of appreciation of you both. I've been listening to the podcast since it started and I cannot imagine my mornings without it. You guys have a remarkable ability to remain genuine and relatable whilst being in the public eye, something that is incredibly refreshing. I can't count the amount of times that your podcast has filled me with stitches laughing and inadvertently lightened the load of whatever tough time I've been going through. Early this year, I was lucky enough to travel to Europe from Australia with some of my closest friends. One of my fondest memories of the trip was lying in bed with my girlfriends in Italy after a night out and watching Jamie's wedding speech on repeat. How special to be able to witness the love between you two people and feel it so deeply without personally knowing them. I think we watched the video about 10 times, each of us shedding a tear and hoping that we'd find love as beautiful as the two you seem to have. Thank you for opening your hearts and creating such an entertaining, funny and wholesome podcast. I hope you feel the ripples of appreciation all the way from Australia. Take care and remember to always give yourself that love that you so easily give to everyone. Kindest regards, Lara. Oh, that's so sweet. Isn't that so Lara, sweet? Thank you so much. Hey, I really do want to say, because it's the um, sort of Christmas episode, then we have the New Year episode. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone. A massive thank you. We love doing this and we love you guys listening. We love our little community. Yeah, we it's really so love it. so much fun. The stories of love are really amazing. And we have so many of them to the point where we need to just put them all in. But I thought we would end the year on just something a bit more rogue and robust. Oh, really? Yeah, I thought we'd do that. Like what? Well, those ones. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. I don't have any more for you. Oh, God, you rogue and robust little creature. Sorry, little creature. Um, And we just do, thank you, guys. Um, It's been an amazing year. It's been a really great year. I hope you guys have all had a great year too. And remember, we've got next year to come. Send in all these wilder stories. Sophie likes the stories of love and nice ones. I like the crazy wild ones. So if you have something bizarre and crazy that you haven't sent in, please send it to us. Or if you have stories of love, we love them too. Send them into at Newlyweds Podcast on Instagram. The link is in the description. Or you can send us an email, newlyweds at jampotproductions.co.uk. That's the end of. Listeners' messages. Because it's a Christmas episode, mm -hmm. um, and look, honey, we've been working so much, we haven't really had a date for a while. We kind of have dinners together every night, of course, but we haven't been just you and I on a date you know, dressing up, maybe putting a little perfume on. I always wear perfume. Okay, maybe putting a suit on, taking you for dinner. Oh, hi. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how are you doing? Feeling great. Hey, how are you doing? Are we role playing? No, we, I was sort of, sort of role playing. Anyway, I read this article which basically says that uh, twen it's basically the title is 10 questions that will make you fall in love on the first date. Okay. So I thought we could pretend that we're on a first date. And I can ask you the 10 questions. Let's go. And your answers will make me fall in love with you all over again. Oh. Are you ready for this? Okay. So let's pretend we're on a date as well, because sometimes on a first date okay. you don't have the same. Okay. Here we go. Oh, hey. Hey. <laughs> How are you? Why are you talking like that? I'm not. We're on a first date. Oh, okay. Hi. Hey. Hey. Hi. Hi. This is awkward, actually. This what is that? weird. What's going on? Okay, I have, a, I have some questions for you. Um, on a first date, you just not go in with 10 questions. So I'd be like, okay. psycho. I'd All be right. like, zero killer. Ow. I, hey, by the way, I read this article earlier. Do you like reading? No, darn ick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, hold on. How, do you read? Ick. <laughs> Hell, okay, fine. Do you, um, did you go to university? Ick. Oh my God, okay. You well. can't do the small talk. Are you, okay, uni's got right. right. Yeah, I went to Newcastle. Okay. Where did you go? All right, here we go. Um, you know what I love to do? What? I love to read. Oh, God, I get out. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what I love to do? What? I love to... I, hey, I've been... Do you love love? Oh, oh vomit, my God. Vomit, I can't you're done. fucking get Just anywhere. Just ask me the goddamn questions. Okay, I'm going to ask you the goddamn questions, all right? What is your idea of a perfect day? Okay, wake up on the beach, go to do something, activity, get those endorphins rushing, have a delicious breakfast, go swimming in the sea, maybe stroke a dolphin, then go on a boat, cruise around the ocean, have some lovely food, sunbathe, dive in the sea, come back, 
massage, pajamas, <laughs> dinner, real housewives, perfect day. What's yours? <laughs> Sophie said, I asked Sophie what pet she would want if she couldn't, if she, if she, we didn't have the dog and she didn't have a pet, what pet would she want? She said she wanted a pet dolphin. <laughs> I said, what would you do that? She said, I would get a swimming pool, have a dolphin, I would stroke it every day. I'd swim with it. <laughs> So and I like hold its spin and it could jump around if it was not cruel. Okay, next question. What do you value most in a friendship? Loyalty. Ooh. What is your favorite memory? Um our wedding. Mm. What's your worst memory? Mm, my mum drives me. I'm at a small all girls school in Warwickshire. She gets in the car, she drives me. I got picked for a team, first team hockey top match against another school I was so excited all my friends were all really sporty I was not sporty so I had my whole hockey kit with me all my gym kit like my PE kit and I'm walking across the road and this car just runs me over and I'm underneath this car I'm 11 I'm so so thin and small and I'm underneath this car all the only thought that went through my mind was he ran over my foot my leg and the only thought that went over my mind was shall I pick up my bags my hockey bags because I need to play hockey and then I ran like so far on this broken leg and then I got to the other side and I was screaming and my mum heard my scream she said all she could see was she looked she saw the car with all my kit underneath it and she was like and then she ran out and she picked me up and everything honey yeah no and then my mum said you can go bearing in mind I was 10 she was like right we can go to the cinema and you can watch anything you want and I said I want to watch a 40 year old virgin do you remember with that guy in it yeah it was Steve Crown yeah so she was like uh okay so you so went to watch a 40 year old virgin watch, I was desperate to watch it and I got sweet it was great I got like two weeks off school walked around in crutches loads of everyone was giving me presents it was fun I, my mum said to me once, you can go to the cinema and watch anything you want, I want and I'll come with you. And I went, great. And we had the choice between, I think it was Meet the Parents or Brokeback Mountain. And I thought Brokeback Mountain was just about cowboys. And so I went, <laughs> I went with my mum to watch Brokeback Mountain. And obviously it's an incredible love story about two cowboys falling in love. But I was about, I was a 14 year old boy. And the moment that I realized- sex scenes. The moment that I realized they were having a sex scene, I was sitting with my mum in the cinema, in a packed cinema. I just got the hysterics and I started- shaking with laughter like this because I was so embarrassed I was watching a sex scene with my mum and I looked to my left I looked to my mum and she was like this <laughs> just <laughs> looking straight <laughs> at while this 15 minute sex scene with cowboys or whatever went I on I really want to see that movie it's so good but do not watch it with your parents yeah, can you watch sex scenes with sex your parents scenes with your parents like Game of Thrones with your parents no like siblings fucking each other no <laughs> I remember my sister watched it with my dad and every time we, we're watching it at the moment and I'm like, I just, I can't get over the fact that she watched that with my dad in the room. Okay, here we go. What roles and lo- what roles do love and affection play in your life? Love and affection, mm. big roles. Okay, is that your only answer? Big roles? Okay. I How do. close are you to your family? Very close. What's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you? Mm, I once sat in chocolate and it, I, everyone thought it was poo and it was to a christening and I was wearing a white linen dress and I was young and it was like so embarrassing. I think that might be the most embarrassing. Where were you? At a christening. You, you sat in At cho- my friend's christening. Like I went as like half plus one and then I was so embarrassed. What's the greatest accomplishment of your life so far? Marrying you. Tell me something that you like about me already. You make me laugh. Hey, for anyone who is going on a date this Christmas, use those questions to add a little bit of spice to it. Or don't, because they might think you're crazy. Speaking of which, honey, uh, today we have a special guest on um, with some more questions because it's a little Christmassy quiz that's going to happen. Guys, if you've been listening carefully to our podcast, you might be able to play along to this quiz as well. We invited my friend... Radio 1 host as well, Matt Emerson onto the podcast to host a little bit of a Christmas quiz for us. So please welcome to the podcast, Mr. Matt Edmondson. Matt, how does it feel to be on your favourite podcast? Oh, well, it's been a while actually uh, since I was on um, uh, my favourite podcast. Which? Uh... 
This one. No, oh, oh sorry, you were talking about this one. Yeah, which one? Oh, oh yeah, it feels good. No, it feels good. No, I love this podcast. I love the both of you. I'm delighted to be here. And I feel like I don't know who the third wheel is. Is it Sophie? Is it Sophie? It's me. I'm feeling a little out of my depth there. Mm, yeah. There's a real bromance going on. Yeah. Just for context, when uh I had uh, my radio show, my my normal co-host Molly, she went off on maternity leave mm. and I asked Jamie if he would come and co-host the show. Mm-hmm. And since then, what what what's stronger than a bromance? Just a romance. Just I a think. romance. Just a romance. But it's a romance. Drop the B. We um we've fallen quite hard for each other. <laughs> we have. We, we have. have. I know Should everything. I leave? Of- you I know guys. everything. I can say. I can uh, ask yeah, a question. Uh, no, no, don't worry. I know because he nip nip nips all What's around. What's he been saying about me? Uh, <laughs> you talk. You guys meet up on the rag, firstly. Yeah. Am yeah. I right? Yeah. That's like a weekly. Is it a weekly meeting you have? We yeah, try to. We try and do we a little try. weekly meeting. That's yeah. a bit excessive to me, mm. not think. Matt doesn't like uh, any wet food. Yeah, no, okay, this is what he has told me. But then mm. I suddenly feared, like, maybe that, that was a secret you didn't want him to tell me. No, no, that's to... fine. Uh, well, hang Elaborate, on. I know, please. I don't like a dry food getting wet. <laughs> It's so if the food crazy. if the food is originally if it's a wet food already if it's a soup you know I can't argue with that I can't change matter Sophie, um, <laughs> but I but what I wouldn't want and this is very controversial I don't know why you started the podcast with this because well, I, I want people to be on my side I want them to like me and I'm going to say a thing which I think is going to offend ninety percent of your listeners which uh, here is we go. I fundamentally disagree with the concept of gravy. <laughs> I don't like it. Ooh, I don't like it. I'm unsure. Why yeah. Why would I go to the time, trouble and effort of roasting a potato to crisp perfection, fluffy on the inside, golden on the outside, and then make it wet? I'm going to tell you, so... Okay, uh, just a question. So, sauces in general, condiments? I'm Cond- sorry, how are we saying that? <laughs> Wait, how do you say it, guys? How do you it say it? It definitely doesn't have the word condom in it. <laughs> Condiments. Condiments. Wait, you pronounce it. Condiments. Co- condiments. Condiments. A condiment is where you've just put ketchup into a Johnny. That's what that is. Just <laughs> into a Johnny. I, as I, well. was, I wasn't. I was trying to find another word for condom. Who <laughs> goes? Oh, babe, can you just get me a Johnny? <laughs> <laughs> we went to the canteen and uh, there was a r- full roast on display. Roast ham, it was. Mm. All the trimmings. There was gravy, controversially. Uh, I slapped it away from the man's hand. <laughs> How did, not on my watch. Um, and uh, Jamie uh, went up there and he said, I'd like, to all, I'd like to have some of the ham, please. And the man said, okay, do you want like, uh, you know, the potatoes or the uh, uh, broccoli? No, no, I just want ham. In fact... <laughs> Scra- everything else, scrap it. Just give me ham. Keto diet. So he ordered, He it was disgusting. He ordered this like, you know like people stack pancakes? Oh. It was like that, but all ham. And he he then, the guy said, the guy charged him for two full roast dinners. And I said, well, surely you've not had all the other stuff. Just say, replace that with the ham. But no, no, Jamie didn't even question it. He ended up paying £16 no, you didn't. for... Yeah three slices of ham and he didn't he didn't even think twice it made me feel physically sick both visually to look at and because he spent that much money on it he couldn't get over it couldn't get over it so I think about it I would say I think about that once a week you do but I do run a fantastic games company yeah. and I thought well look it's Christmas everyone likes games at Christmas we're all mm-hmm. here in our little hats mm-hmm. why not play some games I can't wait that are both fun for the podcast and the listeners so uh, the first game we're going to play is called Answergrams you'll okay. get five letters and then you have to unscramble them a bit like a countdown conundrum him to make a word. Whoever gets that word first wins the point. Okay. Okay, man. All right. Are we ready to try and win a first Something point? I am ready. All right. Yeah, here we go. You ready for this? Okay. Name the first Newlyweds episode. Oh my God. What oh was it called? God. I can tell you. It's something and proposals. I know. Yeah. The... It's something and proposals. And obviously at home you can play along with this as well. Uh, just make a little note down if you know the answer. Designer of Sophie's dress in the Spain ceremony. Oh my God. First letter. Yes. I think I got it. Yeah. Um, the breed of Bobby, a long haired something. Yep. Also known. Do you know that the dog is known as Throbber to, between me and Jamie? <laughs> Why is the dog named as Throbber? As in a Throbber. Throbber. No, that, throbber. That feels quite phallic for some mm, reason. That's what we thought. It's, it's a Throbber. So Matt and I know Bobby as Throbber. Bobby Throbber. Yeah, Bobby Throbber. Yeah. In fact, we never speak of the word Bobby. No, it's When throbber. I read the question there, I was like, who's Bobby? And I, thought, <laughs> I thought, oh, it's Throbber the dog. It's Throbber. Yeah. No. Yeah. Throbber, okay, go. Throbber the dogs. Uh, next up, uh, the location of Sophie and Jamie's proposal. 
So it's the name of the hotel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is not to do with you. We just couldn't think of another one. From which country do koalas originate from? Right, unscramble those. I'm going to set a little okay. timer. Okay. <sighs> okay, got it. What is it? What the hell? Drape. It is drape. Drape. Yes! Okay, well, I got Pedro too. <laughs> Pedro. Pedro. <laughs> yeah. Pedra. Pedra, yeah. Pedra. Great. Yeah. Do the answer there if you're playing along at home? We had Emma Beaumont. Yep. Uh, that was the oh, designer was of Elizabeth. your dress. Oh, oh you got right. lucky. I got lucky. You got yeah. real lucky. Uh, Breed of Throbber is a uh, Dashand. Yep. <laughs> Um, it was the Rosewood Hotel in London yep. and koalas originate from Australia, mate. Oh, we got it. This is a fresh set of questions now, okay? All right. What do you... Uh, Sorry, I thought we were still in Australian. Is that Australian? Y- yeah. Nah, mate, that's Australian. <laughs> oh, it's from the Outback. It's like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. None of this inner city bollocks. <laughs> If you're in the Outback, that's unbelievable. You play a bit of uh, uh, Australian rules. You sound like you're from Nashville. I was going to say that accent took a real, (laughs) real detour somewhere else on route. Can we also just quickly, before Matt's uh, been doing personal training, and to explain what happened the other day? I've been receiving the personal training, not giving the personal training. (laughs) Just wanted to point that out. Uh, The other day, I was in a group session, um, and they partner you up. They pay you up with people. And you don't know them, obviously, just like a load of fat dads. <laughs> and uh, there was an exercise where they put two dumbbells on the floor and you had to lie down on your back. And the other was you tuck your toes under the dumbbells and then you're meant to do a sit-up towards the dumbbells. But the instructor said, if you're feeling particularly confident, you can try and stand all the way up. So you go, and then upwards. And she said, uh, probably won't be able to do it. Uh, only one person did it in the previous session, which was like a red rag to a bull for me. <laughs> I was like, uh, if it kills me, I'm standing up. So my f- it's my first exercise. I put my, t- my feet under the thing. I lie back, little nod to the fat dad next to me. Hands, I hope he's not listening. Um, hands under the head. Uh, Go for it. <laughs> On the way up. I'm able to make it standing up. However, I have a bit of propulsion help from a fart that, that my body cannot contain. Because my, my whatever the muscles are that would normally uh, prevent that, they're, they've been blasted wide open. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was loud and it was like it was very very attention grabbing because already it was all eyes on me because oh he's gone for the stand up everyone looks over bang massive explosive fart and I think maybe I'll, I'll get away with it go back down I think I'll do it do it again second time the exact same thing happens there was a there was a, a little pal waiting up there who waited to come out oh absolutely awful <laughs> Terrible, terrible, okay. Terrible. <laughs> Next game. Next game. Uh, let's go. Oh okay. my god. So five <sighs> questions. Right now, just the first letter. What activity did Jamie do on his stag? Mm, got it. The location of Sophie's abroad Hindu. Mm-hmm. The name of the London borough, which titled the show that you two met on. Mm-hmm. Reynolds, Felipe, and Gosling are all famous actors with which first name? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And your last question: what kind of belly button is the opposite of an outie? Okay. okay. Time just, right, you have to just slow down because this bit I'm not good at. Crisps. No. Okay, wait. I'm in. Crisp. Yes, Sophie. What? <laughs> this game is on fire. Yes. It's one all. Okay, here we okay. go. Designer of Sophie's dress at the London wedding. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> Come on. Okay, I'm going to go for Alexandra Wang. <laughs> okay, if, I don't know. if in doubt, the name of Sophie's sister. Mm hmm. What blood red gemstone is traditionally associated with 40 years worth of marriage? Mm-hmm. God, imagine what this podcast will look like then. Mm. <laughs> uh, what planet are we currently on? And what is the non alcoholic ingredient in a dirty martini? Your time. Oh. Starts. Got it. Oh um, my God. No, you haven't. Virgo. No, it is not okay. Virgo. You are frozen um, out. Virgo. Okay. Grove. Yes. Now it's going to be up to you to do some betting here. What are there more of? The total number of listeners of this podcast, Newlyweds, in 2023, or people who live in Sweden? What are there more of in the world? Okay. So, it's got to be people who live in Sweden. I'm going to give you some uh, in the game. Oh, where is it? Deck one. Oh my God, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's got to be our podcast. 
Sophie is correct. Oh my God. There were 13.17 million listeners uh, in 2023 to this podcast and only 10.42 million people living in Sweden. Wow. So, well done, guys. That's That's amazing. That's that's literally a whole country listening to this podcast. That is amazing. Number of people who attended the first live show that you two did versus the teeth in a snail's mouth. What are there more of? Oh, my God. The teeth, snails. Okay, I'm going to bet there is more people to... Um, in a, in our, at our show. Sophie, where I'm, do you want to go? I'm going to have to go with the snail's mouth because I just you can't have one. How many are you betting, honey? I'm going to do one on the snail's mouth. I like oh how you're so risk averse. You're the opposite yeah, of him. Yeah. yeah, it's it's great. That's actually quite a good partnership. It's such a good partnership. I've never met someone who's uh, sort of got a higher risk appetite than Jamie. Yeah, and no. Sophie, Sophie's g- g- conservative in that area. Mm. Okay, let's get to it. Whereas you're just conservative politically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Number of people who attended the live show, 900. Teeth in a snail's mouth, 14,000. So, Sophie, again, you get a point. Last round. Number of poo stories retold on the pod versus trees needed to make a lifetime supply of toilet paper for one person. No way. I'm going to bet all on the amount of poo being spoken on this podcast. Okay. I'm also going to get that all on the amount of poo. Okay, you're both Whoa. going all in Whoa. on number of poo stories. The number of poo <laughs> stories told on this pod are 207. <gasps> That's sickening, guys. <laughs> it's quite a lot. No, it's actually ridiculous. However, it takes 400 trees <laughs> to make a lifetime supply of toilet paper for one person. Oh my god, we got that so, so wrong. Three. You're both wrong. That doesn't affect the scores because you both went all in on the wrong answer, which yeah. means that the winner of this round Sophie. is Sophie. Yes. Very good. Very good. Manny, can I say oh, that was fantastic? I'm Don't so- say fantastic like that. It'll spread. It was. I want to say it was fantastic as well. It, it was, was so fantastic. great. Thank you guys. That was, hey. that was so great. Manny, that was great. Thank, oh, you, thank so you so much. much. Okay, baby, that is the end of our episode. That was really fun. I like these games a lot. Okay, we want to say a Merry Christmas to every single person. Merry Christmas, guys. I hope it's a special one wherever you are. And just remember, we're here with you. So listen, we're all having Christmas together. What advice do you want to give for the year, maybe? Um, that next year is going to be an even better year. Love that. 2024, let's bring it on. 2024, ride that wave, baby. Hey, I want to say a huge thank you to every single person who listened to us this year. Just want to say that, again, just send in all of your messages to us if you want to. Um, please send them to at Newlyweds Podcast on Instagram or our email is newlyweds at jampopproductions.co.uk. Love stories, wild, crazy stories for me. Love stories for Sophie. We absolutely we love it. We adore you guys. Have the best Christmas. We love you. Goodbye. Oh, wait, also, we're on oh. YouTube. Oh, and if you want to see us more, just go on to YouTube and click that subscribe button. And also, just before we go, our present from you guys, it would be absolutely amazing if you could click that subscribe button wherever you're listening to this podcast. It makes the world of difference you're for us. You're asking them for a present. Yeah, it just, it doesn't cost anything. Just clicking that button. Click, click, click. It, honestly, it changes, changes the podcast's life. If you do that. It, really? Oh my God, it does. Guys, oh yeah, something's happened with podcasting. You now have to subscribe to click to listen to us. Otherwise we just disappear. Poof, vanish, gone. Yeah. So, so if you don't subscribe, yeah, if you don't, right? If you don't subscribe, then you might not catch the episode. Mm. So please subscribe. Wouldn't that be sad? Please subscribe. It doesn't please. cost anything. Just click that little button. I think we've begged enough there. All right, everybody. Listen, have the best Christmas. All right, everybody. If you're getting divorced. We love you. If you're getting engaged. Go do it. If you're married. Oh, good luck. If you're spending Christmas with the family. Good luck. If you if you're going on a date this Christmas. Oh my god, good luck. I need to stop saying good luck. <laughs> and if you are just single. Good luck. Oh my I can't god. stop. Good Merry luck. Christmas, Tom, everybody. Love you. Goodbye. We'll see you later. Goodbye. <laughs>